Hey everyone, Jay here from Project Unity, bringing you another episode of UAP News. The purpose of this series is to provide those who do not use multiple social media platforms with an opportunity to get the same information as those that do. First off, we have an article by Mark Sacotti that brought to light an internal effort from the US Navy to mitigate the ability to dislodge actionable intelligence on UFOs via Freedom of Information Act requests. Letters between the Deputy Director for Safety Promotions at the Naval Safety Center, Jeff Jones, and the Navy News Desk Director revealed that Jeff Jones was seeking a point of contact within the Navy for interviews about unidentified aerial phenomena. Jeff was subsequently told that Mr. Joseph Gradisher was the Navy point of contact for all queries in regards to UAP. It is worth noting that Mr. Gradisher, a retired US Navy captain, is now the Deputy Chief of Naval Operations for Information Warfare. The statements from Mr. Gradisher to Mr. Jones that have subsequently caused controversy are concerning the way UAP information is handled in relation to public statements and Freedom of Information Act requests. Mr. Gradisher was quoted to say, From a public affairs perspective, all media inquiries on UAPs go to DOD Public Affairs, Sue Gao. Mr. Jones was then advised by Mr. Gradisher to make no comment, going on to say that the nuances of all of this are such that any deviations from the statements that the DOD makes result in multiple news stories and additional FOIA requests at various levels. Finishing off by saying that if we need to, we'll coordinate with you on specific responses, depending on the questions asked. As stated in the article by Mark, this is a confirmation that the Office of the Secretary of Defense's Public Affairs Office is indeed the only point of contact for all inquiries about UAP, thus keeping control of the situation from a PR perspective. The next response from Mr. Gradisher was even more intriguing, as he goes on to say, Also, Generally speaking, we let the normal FOIA process work as it's supposed to, but we have been requesting that FOIA offices coordinate with us on UAP-focused FOIA responses before they hit reply, so that new terms slash language aren't introduced that complicate the overall messaging efforts. Additionally, there is now a security classification guidance document at the secret level that addresses the UAP issue and what may or may not be discussed publicly. What we can take from this recent find by Mark Sacotti is that there is a concerted effort within most notably the US Navy chain of command to manage the UAP conversation in a way that won't allow for the dislodging of information that is considered premature, perhaps too shocking for the public. And so they are masking certain keywords and terminologies from public statements in order to prevent us from forcing them by law to disseminate components of the UAP portfolio that they would prefer us not to have access to. Mark has performed a fantastic service to the UFO community by revealing this information and a follow-up article by Adam Kehoe in relation to this issue was recently published on Adam's blog. Both Mark and Adam's publications can be found in the description box below. Up next, we have an article on Medium.com by writer Carolyn Brulard, who has written a fantastic piece about the necessity for understanding the integral consciousness connection that exists within the UFO subject. Drawing upon a more spiritual sense of exploration into the mysteries of the phenomenon and our ability to interact with it positively through intention and coherent focused thought, Carolyn speaks on the unfortunate bifurcation between those that are focused primarily on what we can call the nuts and bolts of the UFO issue and those that are focused more on the spiritual or metaphysical aspect of the conversation. Carolyn shares my own personal view that these two camps should not be separate and are most useful when they interact symbiotically with each other. It's a very good read, and I will be having Carolyn on Project Unity soon for a discussion about consciousness and the UFO issue. You can find the link for her article on medium.com in the description box below. Following on from this, we have quite a few news reports and articles relating to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force and the pending report from the UAPTF that is due to arrive in June. First up, we have an article by Tamar Lapin and Jackie Salo, writing for the New York Post. A link for this article can be found in the description box below, and the article details recent statements from the former Director for National Intelligence, John Ratcliffe, who has recently appeared on Fox News to speak on the pending report by the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force. Actually, 
um, is a program that's been in place for a few years in terms of a task force that, that has been uh, there under the National Defense Authorization Act. But as you correctly point out, Maria, there's now a report that will be issued by the, by the Pentagon, uh, by the Secretary of Defense and the Director of National Intelligence. I actually wanted to get this information out and declassified before I left office, but we weren't able to get it down into an, uh, an unclassified format that we could talk about uh, quickly enough. But, but frankly, there are a lot more sightings than have been made public. Some of those have been declassified. When we talk about sightings, we're talking about objects that have been seen by Navy or Air Force pilots or have been picked up by satellite imagery that, um, uh, frankly, um, engage in actions that are difficult to explain, that um, movements that... Uh, that are hard to replicate, that we don't have the technology for, or traveling at speeds that you know, exceed the sound barrier without a, a sonic boom. So in short, um, things that we are observing that are difficult to explain. Um, and so uh, you know, there's actually quite a few of those, and I think that that information is being gathered and will, will be put out um, in a way that the American people can see. We always, when we, when we see these things, Maria, we always look for a, a, a plausible explanation. You know, weather can cause disturbances, visual disturbances. Sometimes we wonder whether or not our adversaries have technologies um, that are a little bit further down the road than we thought or that we realized. But there are instances where we don't have good explanations for some of the things that we've seen. And, um, you know, when that information becomes declassified, I'll be able to talk a little bit more about that. <laughs> can you tell us where it was seen? Actually, all over the world. There have been sightings all over the world. And, and when we talk about sightings, the other thing I will tell you is um, it's not just a pilot or just uh, a satellite or some um, uh, intelligence collection. Usually we have multiple sensors that are picking up these things. And so, uh, you know, again, some of this are just their unexplained phenomenon. Um, and uh, there's actually quite a few more than have been made public. So uh, I think it'll be healthy for uh, as much of this information to get out there as possible. Alongside John Ratcliffe's recent comments, Senator Marco Rubio was questioned about UAPs and the pending report from the UAP task force on Fox News. Senator, I want to turn to uh, unidentified objects in the air. I had an exclusive interview with the former director of national intelligence, John Ratcliffe, the other night on Fox News, where I asked him about this upcoming Pentagon report, which you, of course, have, have, have commissioned or encouraged to have a report on these unidentified objects. Here's John Ratcliffe with me last week. I've got to get your reaction to what's taking place. Have unidentified flying objects been seen? Well, sure. We, we have uh, lots of reports about what we call uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. There are a lot more sightings than have been made public. Sometimes we wonder whether or not our adversaries have technologies um, that are a little bit further down the road than we thought or that we realized. So, Senator, what about that? What can you tell us about UFOs? Well, we have things flying over military installations, over military exercises, and other places. And we don't know what it is. It isn't ours. It isn't anything that's registered with the FAA. And in many cases, exhibits attributes of things we've never seen technology, the kinds of technology we haven't seen before, or at least that, that's what it seems like. I think you have to know what it is, or we have to try to know what it is. That's my view of it. Without any preconceived notions, maybe there's a logical explanation. Uh, maybe it's a, you know, something that can be explained away. Uh, maybe it's a foreign adversary who's made a technological leap, as you heard the former DNI said. Whatever it is, we need to know the answer to it. The problem with this issue is every time you raise it, people get all you know, nervous. Oh, does this mean UFOs and aliens and extraterrestrials? We don't have to go that far. It's very simple. There are things flying over national security uh, installations. We don't know who they are. We don't know what it is. It isn't ours. We need to find out. Well, this is absolutely fascinating. So, I mean, from, from my standpoint, when I heard John Ratcliffe talk about that, I went and I looked up what you've said about the Pentagon report coming up June 1st. What do you think we're going to learn from that Pentagon report on June 1st? Well, first, I'm not sure they're going to come in on time, to be honest with you, because they miss a lot of deadlines in government on these sorts of things. But we'll get a report at some point. Uh, uh, second is, I don't know if we're going to know what—I what, mean, I don't, I'm not sure that by June 1st they'll have reached a hard conclusion about what they're dealing with, and there may be more questions or new questions than, than full answers after the fact. I can tell you it's being taken more seriously now than it ever has been. And look, there's a stigma associated with this, all right? When a, when a Navy pilot would report that they saw something, 
they were told you need to go see the flight surgeon, you know, so uh, to check out your head, you know, make sure you're not seeing things. So there's a stigma associated with reporting it, even talking to you about it now, right? I mean, people are going to go out and say, look what these people are focused on when the world is falling apart. So there's a, there's a stigma associated with it, and that's, I think, needs to go away. We don't have any preconceived notions about what this is or isn't. We just need to know, or we need to start, we need to start trying to know. I think the first step is to ask the question. If you don't ask the question, you're not going to get yeah. or begin to get answers. Next up, we have some additional statements from the chairman of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, Senator Marco Rubio, who was stopped briefly in an airport by a TMZ reporter who proceeded to ask Senator Rubio about the pending UAPTF report and his views on UFOs. And I, I saw you guys are supposed, they're supposed to be, the government is going to actually have to put out everything they know about UFOs to the public. I guess yeah. it's not... Well, for me, the whole thing was this, and that's why we put that language in there. And that's people talking about space aliens. For me, is there's stuff flying over military installations, and no one knows what it is, and it isn't ours. So for me, that's logical. You want to know what it is. I mean, it's common sense, right? Stuff's flying over the top of your most sensitive installations, and it's not ours, and no one knows whose it is. You should find out what it is and tell us. I mean, are we going to get, like, the friendly aliens, you think? If, 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 if you, <laughs> you think, honestly, should people be worried? I mean, I guess that's a better question. Well, I think the worry is it's the stuff flying over our facilities and we don't know what they are. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, that's the concern. Maybe maybe it's got a logical explanation to it. But, you know, people want to know. I want to know what it is. I mean, who's a bigger threat right now? Do you think? I mean, people are always talking about, like, China's a big threat. But shouldn't yeah. we be also be worried about what the, what's else out in the universe? Well, like? I, I, I wouldn't take it one step at a time. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that's what it's all about. Like I told you, I don't know. I don't know the answer to what it is. But it's stuff that's there. And people so you're, but you're on the intel committee. They don't even tell you what's going on. Well, I think they tell us what's going on. I mean, there's stuff flying over the top of our military installations, and they don't know who's flying it. They don't even know what it is. Um, so that's a problem. We need to find out if we can. So wait, just quick question, man. Everyone thinks you know we're, we're the smartest out there in the universe, but are the aliens possibly smarter than what we are right now? Or is it uh, well, if they made it all the way here, they probably are. Yeah, they're probably <laughs> more advanced. If they can get here and we can't get there, that tells you they're more advanced. But I don't know if there are aliens. I don't know if they've ever visited here. I'm not, you know, when you talk about that stuff, everybody gets, uh, you know, stigmatized about it. No, no, no one wants to sound weird. My thing is very simple. We don't know what that stuff is that's flying over the top of our installations. Let's find out. Maybe it's another country, and that would be bad news, too. But let's just say hypothetically, one last question, man. I, hypothetically, if somebody comes down, there's aliens, should should Biden and should the government, should we try to be friendly with these folks or should oh, we look know, at it? I haven't think given this, we have so many problems going on as it is. That would be that would be one heck of a way to top the last year and a half. A new article by the Washington Post explains how the UAPTF report was actioned in the first place via the COVID relief bill that was signed off on by former President Trump. The $2.3 trillion appropriations bill also contained the Intelligence Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021 attached to which was the request for UAP data transparency that was spearheaded by Senator Marco Rubio through the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. The All Sources report is set to arrive in June of this year. It will contain a classified annex which will not be available for public viewing, but overall we are anticipating new data that will push the UFO UAP conversation forward even further into the political and mainstream conversations. Following on from this, we have a new article from Politico, written by journalist Brian Bender, which focuses on the internal struggles within the US government to gain access to multi-agency information on the UAP portfolio, in preparation for the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force's report that is set to come out in June. One government advisor was quoted to say that a public accounting is proving to be an onerous job of trying to get everyone to come clean. As many within the UFO community will likely be aware, this issue has been studied in secret by various agencies and entities within the US government for the best part of seven decades, and one must imagine that certain groups do not intend to be compliant with transparency policies on this issue. A link to Brian's article on Politico can be found in the description box below. Next up, the former director of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, Lou Elizondo, has established a new website wherein you can find a more extensive background on Lou's early life and education, his career in military service, his work for the Pentagon, as well as projects and pursuits that he has engaged in since 2017. Lou was one of the initial catalysts for the UFO conversation going mainstream, and his continued efforts serve as a reminder to those within government that this issue is worthy of attention and serious study. A link to Lou's website can be found in the description box below. 
Following on from this, we have a new article from The War Zone, written by Adam Kehoe and Mark Sacotti, that highlights a situation wherein unknown vehicles swarmed multiple Navy destroyers. This series of events was said to have occurred in the summer of 2019. This situation led to a thorough investigation that made its way up to the very top of the US Navy chain of command, and this event was first brought to the attention of the UFO community by documentary filmmaker Dave Beatty, who first came across the reports and was actually able to interview some of the ION witnesses of the event, who claimed that they observed craft which were identical to what is famously now known as the Tic Tac craft that former US Navy squadron leader Commander David Fravor witnessed during naval training workups off the coast of California in 2004. UFO historian and researcher Richard Dolan also made a recent presentation focusing on this particular incident, which is well worth listening to. A link to both the article and Richard's presentation can be found in the description box below. Next up, we have an initiative spearheaded by the producer of the groundbreaking documentary film The Phenomenon, James Fox, who has recently created a website titled UAP Act Now. James Fox has provided a streamlined method for people to contact their governmental representatives, and a template letter has also been included for people to utilize. This effort has been supported by former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence Christopher Mellon, who has been quoted on the website to say, Having worked for Congress for over a decade, I can assure you that our elected officials carefully monitor their communications and our collective voices can make a difference. With the Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force report set to arrive in June, it is of the utmost importance that people do contact their representatives to make sure that they are aware of this issue and can subsequently do their due diligence and commit to public service in relation to ongoing transparency efforts on currently classified UFO data. You can find the link to the UAP Act Now website in the description box below, and I highly encourage my American audience to make use of these tools provided to you so that you may contact your representatives and accurately assist in the ongoing mission for transparency. This is a way for all of you to make a difference. Next up, we have a recent interview with the former ATIP director Lou Elizondo on Fox News, wherein Lou talks about the pending UAP report, as well as some of the observed performance capabilities of UAP, capabilities that, so far as we know, are currently outside of the technological envelope of the human race. All right, and now for something completely different. The former national intelligence director is revealing a new government report on UFOs will be full of never-before-seen or heard intel. Frankly, there are a lot more sightings than have been made public. We're talking about objects that, um, frankly, um, engage in actions that are difficult to explain, that um, movements that, uh, that are hard to replicate, that we don't have the technology for. Okay, joining us right now to discuss is Lou Elizondo. He is the former director of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, a Pentagon unit that studied UFOs. Lou, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, so part of the evidence apparently is going to show UFOs or some, you know, they're just unidentified objects, breaking the sound barrier without a sonic boom. How is that possible? Well, I think that's probably the crux of the problem, that we are seeing these, let's call them vehicles, if you will, that are incurring into controlled U.S. airspace that are displaying performance characteristics that are frankly well beyond anything that we can either replicate or, or in some cases really even understand. So when, when you're talking about that, you're, you're talking about how these things are able to do things that we have no idea how it's possible, given the speed and the altitude and things like that, and the turns and everything like that. I, I, I'm sure you've got the top uh, physics experts in the world working on this. Can they come up with any explanation? You know, I, I think as we begin to look at this, we're, we're beginning to realize that a lot of this really isn't breaking the laws of physics. What it's doing is really breaking our understanding of the current laws of physics that we that we are looking at. In essence, um, these things, if you look at quantum physics, there's a lot of modeling right now that suggests that a lot of this performance can be explained uh, if you have a, a really deep understanding of quantum physics. And by the way, you're absolutely right. There's there's five unique observables that these things are, are displaying. One is instantaneous acceleration. The second one is hypersonic velocity. The third one is a bit of an oxymoron, but it's low observability. And then the fourth one is transmedium travel, the ability to operate in different environments. And then the last observable is this, if you will, this weird positive lift or anti-gravity where you have these vehicles 
with no wings, no control surfaces, no engines, and yet somehow they're able to fly and, frankly, outperform some of the very best aircraft that we have in our inventory. Unbelievable stuff. So, when, Lou, when people say, oh, you're in that business, uh, how, do you, how do you explain these UFOs? Sure. Well, my business has always been that as an investigator. Uh, I, I was an intelligence officer for the U.S. government, so my business was just to, to find the truth, whatever the truth is, whether it's uh, a it's terrorism investigation or counter-espionage. Yeah, we, we applied the same methodologies we did investigating terrorist, uh, if you will, uh, operations and, and operatives as we, we did with this. And the information is very compelling. It's, it's real. Yeah. Okay, it's real. Are they from another planet? Well, I, I think it's too early to tell. Uh, the, real, the three options are that have been presented that it's our secret technology, uh, but we've done a terrible job at coordinating yeah. the testing of this technology for decades with ourselves, which is highly unlikely. The second option is that it's foreign adversarial technology, which, if you were to ask me, would be a huge yeah. intelligence failure sure. of this country because we've been technologically leapfrogged. Or the third option is that it's something completely different. It's, if it's not ours and it's not theirs, well, then it's, it's someone or something else. I can't wait for this report to come out. Lou, thank you very much for joining us today. Interesting stuff. Sir, my pleasure. And lastly, we have a recent interview with the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence, Christopher Mellon, speaking with Tucker Carlson from Fox News. During the interview, Chris straightens out some of the rumors surrounding the upcoming UAP task force report. Here's one good thing and an interesting thing. This was in the bill that the previous administration got through in December. And it had a provision in it that started a 180 day countdown for the government to tell us everything the government knows about UFOs. That would include classified UFO sightings. Now, John Ratcliffe, who was the director of national intelligence, has said the report will have massive implications. Frankly, he said there are a lot more sightings that have been made public. Now, Chris Mellon has been on this subject more carefully than maybe anybody in the United States. He's a former Pentagon official, and he joins us tonight for a preview of what we may find out. Chris, I appreciate your coming on tonight. What do you think we're going to learn in this report? Well, thanks very much, Tucker, and thanks for drawing attention to this issue. I think it could be profound and transformative, as, um, as the former DNI, John Ratcliffe, suggested, because in 1970, when Project Blue Book concluded, the, they concluded and told the American people, we don't see any evidence of technological breakthroughs beyond anything that we can do ourselves. We don't see any evidence of uh, a threat to national security. I don't think they can honestly say either of those things in this case. And as people begin to digest that, and they are going to address this at an unclassified level, so that'll be a public statement, I think that's going to raise a lot of questions and send some shockwaves. So they've been lying. I mean, I think that's, I think we can say that. And, I, you know, who knows why? But that really is the question. Why? You know, what, why haven't we heard this before? It's, it's, a, it's a huge deal. It could change our perception of our place in, in the solar, in the universe, really. Why hasn't anyone come forward with this prior to this coming June? It's largely been a matter of stigma, and people are afraid to discuss it. You know, it's shocking, and this is how I got involved. Uh, I became aware in 2016 that U.S. Navy squadrons operating off the east coast of the United States were having recurring encounters with these vehicles, and nobody in the intelligence community was responding. Nobody was supporting them. Nobody was backing them up. Nobody was investigating. It was not being reported up the chain of command. The Secretary of Defense didn't know. It wasn't a matter of concealing the information uh, in the sense of they knew it and processed it and withheld it from the public. It was a matter of hear no evil, see no evil. And that's okay as a personal choice, perhaps, but that's not what you want in the intelligence community. No, it's totally negligent and reckless, actually. Um, do you think that we'll find the government has physical evidence of these vehicles? We may. Uh, I do want to temper expectations a little bit. Um, the, the request from the Congress is not to release classified information, but to review all of the classified information, regardless of source, and then render an unclassified judgment based on that review. So it's not going to be a big document dump. Uh, it's not going to be revealing uh, necessarily new videos or, or anything of that nature. But they will be reviewing all of the information if they, if they do this in the manner that it's been requested. And then they're going to have to, off to also, also have to address who's in charge, how are we going to manage this issue going forward? Who do we think is behind this? 
Are there any technological breakthroughs here that we should be concerned about? So uh, there's a lot on the plate, and, um, and I think it is going to be a, a, a big deal. Thank you for watching this episode of UAP News. If you enjoyed the content, then do please remember to like, subscribe, and if you want to keep up to date with the latest content, hit the notification bell as well. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.